Long John Silver's treasure map. Armated. Check. Captain Hook's hook. Check. Percy Jackson's wristwatch. Yup. My goodness. Is that the time already? We've only got a couple of minutes before we need everyone here in the Puffin Library of made-up things before we set off to... Well, who knows where we're going. But I've heard it involves skateboarding fairies and judo-performing bunnies. I'm serious, by the way. Now... Where are our puffineers? 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 This is not a drill! Baba, we're over here with our new friends. New friends? Oh, you let the alien slugs out the book of Little Badman from our first episode. Can we keep them? They aren't naughty all the time. See, they like it when we feed them donuts. Yummy! They're cute, but a bit slimy. Okay, listeners. Grab your alien slugs and get ready for our next mission. You're listening to the Puffin Podcast, Mission Imagination. Joining me in the Puffin Library today is Puffin Air, Skylar Ray and Ben. Hello, Hi, everybody. So, to kick things off, I've got another game we can have a go at, which helps us get to know each other a bit better. It's called Two Truths and a Lie. It does what it says on the tin. If we could all go around sharing three things about ourselves, two of which are true and one will be made up. For example, I might say I have a pet puffin called Peter, which is untrue. I'll go first. I am a lover of frogs. I have a four-year-old son. I am married. Which one do you think is a lie? The lover of frogs. Correct. I've got three. I have a family dog, I love sushi, and I have a pet goldfish. Skylar, which one do you think is a lie? That he has a pet goldfish. Ben, is that one untrue? Oh yes, it's untrue. I don't have a pet goldfish. Brilliant. Okay, it's time for today's Would You Rather. Would you rather be a deep sea diver in the ocean or an astronaut in outer space and why? Ben? I would be a astronaut in outer space because um, space is unknown. No one knows what's up there. And the sea, everyone can go there every day so people know what's in the sea. But you never know what's in space. Skylar, what would you rather? Underwater diver. Because I actually don't really know what's under the sea and you can go really, really deep into the sea and see a different fish what you don't know. Brilliant answers. A brilliant listener's choice was sent in from Fred, aged eight, from Cornwall, who asks, would you rather be able to move things with your eyes or see in the dark? Would you reckon, Puffineers? I would move things with my eyes. So if you want to touch something, like you're not supposed to touch, like your brother's phone or anything, you can pick it up without using your hands. Fantastic. Skylar Ray? Move stuff with your eyes. And why? It's like your mom took something away from you and you couldn't get it and it's in a high place. You can just um, get it down with your eyes. Okay. I think I would rather see in the dark because sometimes you hear creeping sounds in the dark and you don't know what it is, but you don't want to get up and turn on the light. So if I could see in the dark, I'll be able to look around and see where that sound was coming from. And finally... This lovely listener, Alice, from Old Windsor, sent us a voice note. Let's play it. My name is Alice Wade and I am seven years old. Would you rather have a sweetie tree or a chocolate river in your garden? What do you reckon, Puffin Ears? A chocolate river in my garden, because I love chocolate. (laughs) Skylar Ray? A chocolate river in my garden, because I'm really obsessed with chocolate. (laughs) Fantastic. In the nick of time, it's the awesome Rashmi Sirdesh Pandey. Rashmi is the author of How to Change the World, which celebrates the amazing things that humans can achieve. From the campaign for women votes to the incredible teamwork of the International Space Station. Fun fact, Rashmi's mum says that when she was four, she told her teacher that she was an Indian princess. Apparently, her teacher even asked her mum about it at parents' evening, 
Just in case it was true. Rashmi, tell us the truth. Are we in the presence of an Indian princess? Sadly, you are not. I'm not an Indian princess. It was just a story. Rashmi, would you rather be really famous or really rich? Ooh, I think I would rather be really rich because I think money can do lots of good things in the world. And if you could change one thing about the world, what would you change? So I think I would make sure that absolutely everyone has to grow up learning about empathy and what it is and how to turn it into action. Because I think it's really important that we all are able to put ourselves in someone else's shoes and see the world through their eyes. So that's what I'd change. If only you were in charge of the world, Rashmi. I hope you are all ready to go on an adventure. Rashmi, first up, where are we going and how do we get there? Right. To access this world, we'll be magically jumping into a soapy kitchen sink where we'll use the bubbles to float into this magical, fantastical world. Hold your breath as things are going to get a little soapy. Count down with me. Three, two, one... Wow. wow, I've never felt so clean. All my clothes smell super fresh. It smells like a mixture between a bubble bath and a bubble gum. That's because we have landed in Bubble Town. Can you see? There are lots of bubbles filled with colours. Blue and pink and green and gold. And the clouds here are soft swirls of rainbow. And all around you can see candy floss trees with great big twisted trunks. The branches are stretched and tangled, making a beautiful arc over the pathway. Also, as we get closer to the chocolate mountain, Skylar Eggs, you are a fan of chocolate, it smells more and more like a mug of creamy, dreamy hot chocolate. Mmm... Rashmi, what's that hanging from the tree below us? Oh, Ben, those are little notes hanging by a thread of sugar. If you pick one and read it, you'll see that they are in fact compliments. I've got one here. It says, you're awesome. How did it know that I'm awesome? Baba, here's one for you. It says you are extraordinary. Thanks, mate. You're all right too. What's that sound, Rashmi? Well, in the distance, you can hear the whooshing of a waterfall. You might even be able to see it as you keep going down the windy path. Sparkling bubblegum water tumbling down a chocolate mountain, pounding the rocks as it falls. Yum! Who else lives here? Who are our friends and who are our foes? Fairies, of course. They're friendly. Don't look for them up in the air. They do have wings, but instead of flying, they prefer to skateboard around here. You might catch one whizzing past with their baseball cap on. But watch out for the bunnies. You might see a few of them on your travels. I know, I know, they're so cute. But they can't stand strangers. And they're all black belts in judo. And any one of them could have you on the floor faster than you can say, please, may I have a biscuit? Those bunnies don't scare me. I've done a judo class before. Hiya! Whoa, careful. You nearly took my eye out. Are there any rules around here? Shh. Don't disturb the bunnies. But the biggest law of all. Don't pop a bubble, whatever you do. You hear that, Puffin Ears? Don't Don't pop pop a bubble, bubble, we know. know. Tell us what there is to eat and drink. I'm kind of hungry. So the bubble gum water is perfectly safe and yummy. The flowers are delicious. They taste like summer sunshine and happy days out. Seriously, the grass too, that strawberry flavour. But don't eat the actual berries you'll find dotted about. They're poisonous. And the mushrooms. They're not actually poisonous, but they just don't taste very good. Any secrets to discover? So, behind the waterfall is a top secret fairy library. They won't mind if you use it. They made it to share with visitors just like you. Just slip behind the shimmery chocolate waterfall and push open the door and you'll find a cosy reading nook complete with fluffy marshmallow cushions and all kinds of books. But beyond the library, out the back, is the Bunny Dojo, the Bunny Training Centre. You're not allowed in there, so don't even try. It's locked anyway. I'd just stick to the library if I were you. Now, what is the one rule that can't be broken in this world? Right, now listen very, very carefully because this is important. You must never, ever, ever pop a bubble. 
If you break this rule, the chocolate mountain will melt into a thick, gooey swamp. The bubblegum waterfall will break free and flood the place, which means the fairy skateboards will get wet and they won't be happy. And the bunnies will be angry, of course, and they will all be chasing you. And they're fantastic swimmers, as it happens, so you will have to grab a marshmallow cushion or a pink wafer raft and get paddling as fast as you can. Are we allowed to find the bunnies? I would not dare mess with those bunnies, I'm telling you. Don't fight the bunnies. Are there any costumes of bunnies so you can sneak into the bunny centre? That is such a great idea. Do you know what? If you find a bunny seat, can you tell me? Because I would love to know what happens inside that centre. Are we allowed to try one of the fairy skateboards? Do you know what? I think they're very lovely and they are friendly. So if you ask them nicely, they might let you. But I think you'll need more than a few because they're so tiny. Ah, no! It wasn't me this time. I'm sorry, OK? Not popping a bubble is like being told not to look at something. I just had to do it. Oh, Ben, we had one job. Hold on, is it me? Was that chocolate mountain starting to smell rotten? Ugh. Hang on a minute. It's turning into a thick, smelly swamp. Oh, yuck! These bunnies are doing some stretching. Why are they moving in that way? Uh, I don't mean to alarm you, but these are their warm-up moves before they start chasing us. Don't worry, everyone. I did that one judo class at school. I don't think one class is going to help us when they have their own training centre. Right. Let's think about this. How are we going to get back to the Puffin Library? Okay, 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 guys, don't panic. Don't panic. Stay calm, everyone. I've got my guidebook here, and books always know the answer. Let's see. If you break a rule, there's only one way out. You have to solve the riddle. Ask the author if in doubt. Rashmi, do you have a riddle by any chance? Okay, listen carefully. I found this one in the fairy library. Light as a feather, there's nothing in it. But the strongest person can't hold it much more than a minute. What is it? We've got 30 seconds to crack this, it seems. You lot ready? What do you think it is? An anchor? An anchor. What can't you hold for more than a minute? What can't you hold for more than one minute? Do you guys know? Going to the toilet. Ooh, <laughs> clever answer. Something light as a feather. What's really light? Light as a feather. A bubble. No? Bubble's very light. Yeah, you can't hold it for more than one minute because it'll pop. Um, a feather? Because it, like, might blow off your hand. I was thinking of that. Your breath. Yes, it's your breath. Light as a feather. And most people can't hold it for more than a minute. Absolutely. You have solved the riddle. Whoa! And we're back. We escaped. That was a close call. Feels good to be back in the library. Check out what I brought back with me. Oh, wow. You brought back one of the skateboarding fairies. Cool. At least they're friendly. They'll have a good time skateboarding across all the books in here. Let's keep them safe in the library, shall we? What were your favourite parts of the magical land before everything got a little bit weird? The skateboarding fairies. I like the chocolate mountain. Well, a big thank you to you, Rashmi, for sharing your magical, mystical world with us. If you want to be in an episode of the Puffin Podcast, send us a voice note or email to puffinpodcast at penguinrandomhouse.co.uk. And for more exciting summer holiday activities, head to puffin.co.uk forward slash podcast. Before we go, can you tell us more about how to change the world? Yes, of course I can. So How to Change the World is illustrated by a fantastic artist called Annabelle Tempest. And it is all about the amazing things that humans can achieve when we work together. In fact, here's a short segment from it. The building of the Great Pyramid. On the west bank of the River Nile stands the Great Pyramid of Giza. Built over 4,500 years ago, it is an astonishing feat of human engineering. It took thousands of workers 20 years to put together. But how did they manage it? The pyramid is made up of 2.3 million stone blocks and the smallest ones weigh more than a car. 
amazingly, a people that, as far as we know, hadn't yet discovered wheels, pulleys or iron tools, managed to quarry these blocks, transport them to the construction site and haul them into place to build a perfect pyramid. It took amazing skill and teamwork. Papyrus rolls tell us that the huge limestone blocks were shipped from Tura to Giza and taken through man-made canals right to the foot of the pyramid. Egyptologists think that workers then used giant sledges to pull the blocks to the pyramid, but this still doesn't explain how they managed to lift the blocks into place. There are lots of theories about ramps, but we don't know how they worked. Did they zigzag up one side? Curve around the whole thing? Build it from the inside? It's a mystery. The Great Pyramid is also amazingly precise. The outer stones are cut to sit together so tightly that you can't even fit a knife's blade between them. The pyramid even points to true north. Ancient Egyptians followed the positions of two stars to get this right. It's impressive even by today's building standards, but it's a marvel for the Bronze Age. The workers were highly skilled craftsmen, not slaves as it was once thought, and they worked together like a well-oiled machine. Ancient Egyptian art and hieroglyphics teach us so much about how people lived, but they say nothing about how the Great Pyramid was built. That's probably no accident. It wasn't designed to be understood. It was designed to be wondered at. However it was built, it is an amazing example of what humans can do when they use their talents and work together. Wow, that sounds so inspiring. Make sure you check out How to Change the World. Thanks so much for joining us on this episode of Puffin Podcast, Major Imagination, with me, Skylar Ray. And me, Ben. Don't forget, we all have the power to change the world. Well, isn't that a perfect way to close things? You Puffineers at home can hit the follow button for weekly episodes to be delivered wherever you get your podcast every Wednesday. And if you've enjoyed today's adventure... Please rate us and write a review so other Puffineers can find the show. Keep on reading and dreaming, everyone. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to Mission Imagination, a Puffin podcast created by Puffin Books, produced by Max Creative. Hosted by me, Baba Tunde Aleshe, with Puffineers Skylar Ray Mannering and Ben Ray Wall.